Hello everyone, Imtiaz here from JobReadyProgrammer.com. So are you too old to get into software development? I can't tell you the number of times I get asked this question. You can check the comments. People are asking all the time. My, I'm 30 years old. Uh, is it too late for me to get into software development? I mean, come on. If you're 30 years old, you've got another 30 to 40 years ahead in your career to do productive work. And if you choose something that you like, you can get good at it really fast. And you'll be doing that thing for the next 30, 40 years. If you choose something that you don't like, you won't excel at it and you'll be stuck in that for the next 30 to 40 years. So long story short, you've got another 30 to 40 years of productive work. So it's never too late to get into this game. Uh, and if you're in your 20s, I mean, come on, you're probably thinking of the examples of kids that were in their teens and they build a startup or an app and they, they got rich from it. It, that's you know that's so rare um, and you shouldn't be comparing yourself with other people anyway but 20s and 30s you're still very young so if you're in your 40s even there's still plenty of time for you to learn something rapidly and and be good at it so if you enjoy uh, if you enjoy this field what I recommend and you've seen it me you've seen me tout in other videos is learn SQL first structured query language SQL it's the language used to interact with databases. It's not a programming language, so to speak. You can't really build apps with it, but it's used as sort of an operational language to interact with databases, put data in, get data out, change data. And the reason I recommend people to learn that first is, first of all, it has a lower barrier of entry. You can get a job after practicing three to four months. And uh, people, you know, data is every company's biggest asset. And there's so many jobs in this field. And so, if you go as a rookie in databases, there will always be some kind of work for you to do in a database or data analyst role. So it takes longer to be a software developer, full stack software developer, um, and it takes only three to four months to become a database developer. So do that first, get that out of the way. You're gonna to need to learn it anyway. Get hired in that field, and then you can learn about software development. So. Let's say you, you want to learn software development. What do you do? What should be your learning path after, you, after you've learned data? What I recommend is first learn the basics of programming, uh, such as loops, if-else statements, conditionals, case expressions, uh, method-level coding, um, how to build classes and objects and that sort of thing. I've got various courses on these subjects, by the way. Um, but you learn the basics of coding, and then you go and practice that coding. And a lot of times people ask, uh, where do I get this practice from? I've got courses that have plenty of practice assignments, but besides that, I want to tell you a different resource that you can take uh, to, 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 to practice your coding skills. There's an excellent website called codingbat.com. Write it down, save it in your favorites. You should be trying to do a puzzle every single day. And they've got easy puzzles, medium puzzles, hard puzzles, and pretty hard puzzles. Once you learn the basics of if-else statements and loops and conditions and all that, you want to be practicing these granular level of, of, of programming and solve these little puzzles which are going to target key areas in your logic. And that's what's going to strengthen your problem solving abilities. And if you do this for a couple of months, you can be way, way ahead of competition. Let's say you do a puzzle every day. By the time you're done, and some of these puzzles obviously could take a couple of days when I first started practicing on coding bat back then it was called Java bat I think this was several years ago um, but uh, you know it took me many times a week to try to solve a problem I didn't go to the solution immediately I wanted to really learn it and so that's what you should be doing is practice all of these puzzles they're so so powerful in, in their ability to take you to the next level I mean I'm talking your competition will be here and you'll be here uh, way, of, you know, I don't even know if this is much of a relevance, but you know, you get the point. You'll be really ahead. Once your granular level programming logic is strong enough, you can learn algorithms and data structures in a week, believe it or not. It should be very, very straightforward uh, for me to tell you to create a linked list, for example, and you've never seen a linked list before, but you've got so much coding practice solving all kinds of puzzles and creative problems. And now you, you look at the link, data, uh, link list data structure or a red black tree data structure and you're like, hmm, you know, you, you can actually do it, learn those things really, really rapidly if your logic is sharp because you did all that coding. And there's a book uh, that I recommend called Algorithms Unlocked. It's by Thomas Corman. This is a really easy read. 
um, compared to his other book that he wrote, Introduction to Algorithms. This is basically the Bible of, of algorithms. And that's way too math heavy. I would never recommend anyone going through that, in my opinion, unless you're doing, I don't know, unless you're really interested in it. But this is a very practical book. It's short. It goes over all of the different um, kinds of algorithms and data structures that you'd need to know in an interview, and they explain it in layman terms. So even someone that hasn't been a co that hasn't even coded a line of code can actually go through this and process some of this information. But if you have been coding for uh, a couple of months and you've solved a bunch of puzzles, for you this should be a piece of cake. And this is a great book, so definitely check it out. So that's what I recommend everyone to do. First, learn SQL. I've got courses on that. Then learn the granular components of programming. I've got courses on that and do assignments that either you do them in, in my courses or you uh, go to Coding Bat, practice those puzzles there on the website. That's really that you just need to strengthen your coding logic. Once your, uh, your coding logic is, is in place and you can, you, know, you can pass any interview that you want because you also learn this, then any app is gonna be very easy for you to build believe it or not. You can learn React.js if you want, or, or Flutter, or you know iOS, Android programming, whatever you want to get into, web development. It's going to be very, very easy for you to learn any framework too, because the, 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 the tough sticking points in your logic are just completely gone, and you're just really sharp at coding. And that could, you can achieve that state in about two years of coding every day. You could be considered an expert in two to three, three, maybe four years. You could be an expert in the industry if you really work hard. So it's all about if you enjoy it. If you're in your 40s and you really like uh, coding, then trust me, it won't take very long for you to be very, very successful in a career. And you still got another 30 years ahead of you where you can really excel and get into management if you want. If you're in your 30s, you have absolutely no excuse. You're still very young. And if you're in your 20s, I mean, come on. You, you know, you shouldn't be uh, thinking that you're too old, especially if you're in your 20s or 30s. So that's it for now. I'm going to wrap it up. Make sure to like this video. Click the like button. It really helps. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date and share this video with as many people as you can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video.